What up folks, if you're just getting started on your fitness journey or you're just getting back into it don't, and you don't know what supplements to take, I know it can be a little overwhelming at times, but that's why I got you today in this video. So let's break it down together. First things first, let's talk about the basics. When you're first starting on your fitness journey, the number one thing you should be focused on is a balanced diet and a consistent exercise routine. You need to get these two in check first before you ever think about taking supplements. If you're not working out consistently and eating the proper foods, then the supplements are simply gonna do you no good. So get your diet in check first, get your workout routine in check second, and then we can talk about taking some supplements. So that's your first step, stick to the basics. Because what I want you to understand is supplements are simply that. They are simply a supplement to your diet, to your training routine. They are they are not a replacement, they are a supplement. They help you on your fitness journey. They do not replace your diet or your exercise. They're just something that can add to it. So you gotta get your nutrition and your workouts right first, and then these will come into play in supplementing you in your fitness journey. So let's just make that clear before we get started. So in today's video, we're gonna talk about three supplements that you should take as a beginner and three supplements that you should not take as a beginner. And we're gonna get into a little more detail of why you should or should not take these supplements. So number one, we're gonna keep it simple. Everybody knows about this one. It is the protein powder. So you have several different types of protein powder. The number one you'll hear of is whey protein, and that's the one I suggest you take. You also have casein protein. You'll have some vegan-based proteins. But protein is gonna be essential in your fitness journey because it can help you hit your protein goal. Especially if you're struggling to get enough protein in through your whole foods, through your regular diet, a protein powder can really help you hit that protein goal because there's a lot of protein packed into one serving of it. And for the most part, they have a little bit of calorie. So it can help you stick to your macros throughout your day while hitting your protein goal. And that's the number one most important thing you wanna do when it comes to your nutrition. Protein is gonna be good for your muscle recovery and your muscle growth. It's probably the number one macronutrient when it comes to a fitness journey. So get your protein right first, and then you can worry about carbs and fats later on. And that brings us to number two, creatine. I know that sounds kind of intimidating, the word creatine, it just sounds like it's a crazy supplement, but it's not. Creatine is the most researched supplement out there. It, is, it has been shown to increase strength, increase lean muscle mass, and to help your muscles recover more quickly during your exercise. So I recommend it to beginners because it's not harmful to your body and it's only gonna help you. There's not really any side effects to why it may not help you. But if you do take it, just make sure you're drinking plenty of water, staying hydrated, which you should be doing anyways, even if you're not taking creatine. But yeah, there's really no downside to taking creatine, so why not take it? It's fairly cheap for the most part, so you can't go wrong with it. But be careful when you're buying creatine because there are different types of creatine. And the one that you wanna take is creatine monohydrate. So this is the one that's the most studied, that's the most effective. It's just straight creatine. You don't, want any, you don't want any blends in there with it. Just get the creatine monohydrate because it's straight creatine, which is the purest form of it. And that's what you need. You don't need any of that other stuff that they try to mix in there to make it sound better. It's really not. Get creatine monohydrate and that's what you wanna stick to. And number three is a multivitamin, which you should be taking this anyways, even if you're not on a fitness journey. A multivitamin is gonna be good for pretty much everybody because not everybody is eating a perfect, well-rounded diet. A multivitamin is gonna be good to help supplement for some of those micronutrients that you may not be getting in your diet. Some people will argue that a multivitamin is not providing you all the nutrients that you need, which is true. It's not gonna give you everything you need, but it can help you get closer to that goal. It can give you a little bit of that instead of none of it. So I suggest take one. Some people will say it ain't really worth it, but yeah, you can't really go wrong with the multivitamin. And I suggest you take this, even if you're on a fitness journey or not, it's gonna be beneficial for you. A multivitamin is gonna fill any of those nutritional gaps that you have in your diet. It's gonna ensure that you're getting all the essential vitamins that you need throughout your day. And it's also gonna give you those minerals that your body needs to function properly. Multivitamins just gonna be good for your overall health. They do have gender specific multivitamins. So whether you're male, female, you can take a gender specific one if you want. They're basically the same. They may have a few slightly different ingredients, which you may wanna take because it may be more beneficial for you whether you're male or female. But I suggest male and female should both take a multivitamin. It's gonna be good for both. So now that we've talked about a few supplements that I would suggest you take as a beginner, now let's talk about some supplements that I would avoid and or be cautious with as a beginner when you're first starting out on your fitness journey or just getting back into it. So number one, which is a very 
controversial one for me because I actually take this supplement, I believe in it a lot, that it, that it works and it will help you. But as a beginner, it's not something I suggest you start taking now. We'll get more into the details in just a minute. But number one is pre-workout. So why should you not take pre-workout as a beginner? And that's because you can start to be dependent on it. If you're using pre-workout from the get-go, you're gonna start depending on that pre-workout and if you don't have it, then it's gonna mess up your workouts in the future because you're gonna think, I need that pre-workout to work out, but you really don't. So don't start taking it now because you're gonna start depending on it. I would only start taking pre-workout later on in your fitness journey when you actually need it or only for specific days. I wouldn't take it every day. Say for example, a day that you're really tired, you had a long day at work, maybe you could use pre-workout on that day. But pre-workouts are loaded with caffeine and they can cause jitters, they can cause anxiety, they can cause stomach issues, they can make you have to go to the bathroom. They're gonna have stimulants in them. So if you're not good with stimulants, then I would probably stay away from these or start with half a scoop and maybe work your way up because your body will get used to it over time. But as a beginner, you should focus on natural energy sources. So what does that look like? Getting the proper nutrients in your diet, getting better sleep, Working out in general is gonna help you have more energy. So I would focus on these first to get better workouts. Also fueling up before workout, eat some carbs before your workout to help you have a better workout. And this is gonna be better for you as a beginner. I worked out for probably eight years before I ever took a pre-workout because I didn't need it. I never took it so I didn't get dependent on it and I didn't need it. And now I've kind of ruined that because now I take the pre-workout so I feel like I do need it to work out which is simply not the case but it can help you get in a lot better workout. It will give you a boost of energy. It can give you the mental clarity, the focus that you need to get a good workout in, which is the reason I take it mainly is because I like to be in the gym, focus on what I'm doing, grinding, you know, doing my thing. I don't want to be distracted. So it can help me and it will help you push through on those days that you don't want to be there. So it can be a great supplement if you use it correctly. I would not suggest using it every day. You don't want to abuse it. Don't take more than the recommended dose because it can be harmful to some people if you're prone to bad anxiety and things like that. I wouldn't take it because it can have an effect on that if you are one of those people. So just be careful when you take it. Don't take it from the get go. Maybe wait a year, two, three years down the road before you ever start taking it because you will start being dependent on it and you don't want that to be the case. If you are going to take it, I would suggest staggering it. So maybe take it once a week or maybe only on the days you know you got a hard workout or every other day, whatever that may be for you. Don't get dependent on it and take it every single day because then it's gonna hold you back in the future when you don't have it. Like on a day that you don't have the pre-workout, you're not gonna wanna go work out and you're gonna think you're not getting a good workout in, which is not necessarily the case. So just be cautious when you use pre-workouts because they can be a good and a bad thing at the same time. But if you are one of those people that don't do well with stimulants, you can get pre-workouts that don't have caffeine or stimulants in them. So they call these pump products. So you can get pump products is basically a pre-workout which has pretty much the same things in it that a pre-workout has it just don't have the caffeine or the stimulants in the pre-workout so those are good too if you don't do well with caffeine and stimulants next number two fat burners i don't suggest you take fat burners as a beginner i really don't suggest you take them at all fat burners are often marked as miracle pills but let's be honest most of the time they contain some harmful ingredients in them and they don't really work in the long run. The best way to lose fat is through a healthy diet and through consistent exercise. You don't need to rely on these pills to help you burn fat. Just do the work and you will burn the fat. Just buying these pills, it may help you, it probably won't help you though. You don't wanna become dependent on it, just like the pre-workouts, you don't wanna depend on it to help you lose weight. If you stick to a consistent workout routine and eating healthy 80% of the time, you'll lose the fat. Again, just like the pre-workout, fat burners can be harmful for you. They can cause digestive issues, insomnia, and even give you heart palpitations. So just be careful if you are gonna take them because some of them do have unsafe substances in them. And supplements are not approved by the FDA. So these do not have to be checked by third-party companies. Some supplement companies will do third-party testing, but they're not required to. So just be careful, read the ingredients on the back and know what you're getting yourself into which actually leads us to number three. And number three is proprietary blends. Any supplement that says proprietary blend on the back, let's stay away from those. You don't wanna use those because you don't know what's in that proprietary blend. They don't list out the actual ingredients and how much is in them. They could be, it could be whatever in there, you don't know. A lot of supplement companies will use this so you don't see exactly what's in there and exactly what you're taking. This makes it difficult to know 
what you're actually consuming. You wanna make sure you're always choosing supplements that have transparent labeling. There's a lot of supplements companies out there nowadays and it's not regulated, so you never know what you're actually taking. I would suggest taking supplements from companies that do third-party testing, that test for banned substances or, or substances that may be harmful. I would stick to these supplement brands because that's gonna be the most healthy for you in the long run. So if you see the words proprietary blend on the ingredients on the back of your supplements, don't take it. That's the easiest way to say it. The best thing you can do is just leave it on the shelf. Don't buy it, don't take it because there's no telling what's actually in that blend. You could get way too much of one ingredient or you may not get enough of ingredient that you need in that supplement. So in my opinion, I would just stay away from them altogether because you're probably wasting your money on it if we're being honest. So when you're buying supplements, make sure you check the labels, make sure the ingredients are listed and everything is clear. Look for reputable brands with lots of reviews. There's a lot of supplement companies out there nowadays. So there's tons of good brands out there that actually sell good quality supplements. So just look for name brand ones with lots of reviews. And most of the time, this will help you buy higher quality supplements that will be better for you. And last but not least, you wanna check with your healthcare provider before you start taking any supplements. You need to check with your doctor because they can give you a better opinion on if it's smart for you to take or not. Everybody's different. Everybody's body has different needs. So you may or may not need to take a supplement. So your doctor can give you a better understanding if it's, if it's the right supplement for you or not, or if you should stay away from it. So definitely consult your healthcare professional, your doctor, whoever you see, or ask a professional to get their opinion on something that you should or should not take. To wrap things up, supplements can be beneficial, but they're not magic solutions. So don't depend on them. You want to start with a solid foundation of whole foods and of exercise. And then you can use supplements to supplement your fitness journey down the road. And always consult with a healthcare professional before starting any supplement regimen. So if you found this video helpful, drop me one of these down low, subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell so you never miss another video in the future. Let me know down in the comments which one of these supplements do you recommend and which one of these supplements do you not recommend? I wanna hear why or why not. I know some of you probably disagree with my opinion, but we'll talk about it in the comments below. And then when you're done, YouTube thinks you'll like this video right here.